Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is John J. Gaming on the mic here, coming to you guys with a brand new episode of the ACS Inc. We got ourselves opening day here in season two. It's gonna be a good one here, man. So make sure you smash that like button as well as hit subscribe if you have to be brand new and like what you see here on the channel. Let's go ahead and get underway here. First game of the day. We have the Twin City Beavers going on the road up to the state of New York. And they are going to play against the number eight team in the nation, the Iroquois Eagles, who are the defending champions of the Big North Conference. And I'll tell you what, man, these Twin City Beavers, they got, you know, they're going to have their hands full here for sure, man, because Twin City Beavers, man, you can taste you haven't noticed, they are not a very good football team at least not back in season one the even is just two and ten hailing from the Midwest Conference one of the worst football teams in the ACSA so gonna have to have an A plus game and still might need a miracle if they're gonna pull this one off but we'll see what happens man right now they actually got a pretty solid drive going here um, as of right now they're up three to nothing early on as Jones is going to go ahead and run it up the middle of the field for a decent six-yard gain on the play. So only third and short going down so far. As Jones drops back, throws it to right-hand side, gets it to Dawkins, who almost gets it into the end zone. But a first down for the Beavers. As they just sit one yard away from punching it in, and Jones will do just that. Touchdown, Beavers! And nobody let Minnesota State, the Twin Cities, know that they're a massive underdog here today. Because they are coming out firing on all cylinders. They start this game up 10 to nothing on the number 8 team in the entire nation. But we'll see if the Iroquois Eagles can respond. They were a defending conference champion for a reason. We'll see if they can continue to show that here in season two. But Aruna comes in with the sack. The Beavers sent the blitz and it worked that time around. So now second and 16 trying to throw it towards the end zone. All or nothing. It's just short. So now we got ourselves third and 16. Mark Kelly will drop back the pass. Has an open man downfield finds martini in the end zone touchdown eagles and then cut this thing down 10 to 7 as mark kelly now will throw to the right hand side has stag in the right hand side as well nobody gonna catch him too much speed for anyone that defense to keep up with him and it showed right there another touchdown for the eagles which means for the very first time today the eagles do have a lead here only took till midway through the second quarter to finally get there. But hey, here we are at the same time. As now the Eagles are certainly finding themselves on a roll now. Third and three, giving it off to the tailback. Hunter, who has a wide open hole to run through, actually gets it across midfield here as well. So now Mark Kelly will continue to move forward. Sliding down, matter of fact. Good, nice little gain on the play. It's now third and short coming up for Mark Kelly. He's going to drop back to pass. Has a clean pocket to work with. No pressure starting to build. Going to throw this towards the end zone. Finds Maven. Touchdown, Eagles. And the Iroquois Nation are on a 21 to nothing run since going down 10 to nothing. And it's about to turn 28 to nothing on this run. As Stank gets loose once again. Stank with his second receiving touchdown of the day. And Iroquois now up 28 to 10. Roughly how we expected things. Though I did not expect the Beavers to actually have a lead at some point here in the day. But now second and 10 coming up. Kelly looking to build on the 28 to 3 run that they have definitely been on here so far today now we got third and short coming up kelly dropping back the pass he's looking around gonna throw it over the middle of the stag once again he could do more than go into open field he can also make those tough catches as well and that leads to a first down for the eagles which means the drive will still continue for his iroquois offense 
Is now a couple plays later now. Kelly's going to go ahead, run it up the middle of the field. Actually slides down before reaching a couple of defenders. Almost could have had his head popped off, it seemed like. It's now first and 10 again. Maven throwing it over the middle. Gets it over for a nice little nine-yard gain on the play as well. Now we got second and one. Kelly, another run up the middle. Gets it up to Hunter. And I thought he got across that first down marker, but the officiating staff disagrees. So they're going to run it back here. Third and one. Hunter is still able to get loose, though. So the uh, questionable call by the officials does not cost the Iroquois there. As two plays later, Stank finds the end zone again for his third receiving touchdown of the day. Eagles up 35 to 13 as the Eagles are simply starting to run away with it here. Ever since the Beavers got up 10 to nothing in the first quarter of play, it's been 35 to 3 in favor of Iroquois. But it looks like the Beavers offense is starting to wake up here a little bit as Kettles gets open across the middle of the field. A massive first down. What a way to get your first reception of the second season of the ACSA and now here's Edwards down the sideline he's brought down for a first down here as well so now we got first and ten Jones dropping back going over in the middle finds Gudino who is pushed across the 10 yard line for another first down Beavers with a first and goal opportunity here for the first time since the first quarter and they almost cash in Edwards just diving a little bit too early there. They're going to mark him down at the one-yard line. As Jones will go ahead, run it himself. His second rushing touchdown of the day. Beavers do end up cutting into the lead a little bit. So at least the scoreboard definitely looks a little bit more respectable now. And they're not completely out of this thing yet, especially... If they get this two-point conversion right here, if it makes it a 14-point game as Edwards dives for the end zone. And he is in. Touch two-point conversion is good for the Beavers. And just like that, we got ourselves a 14-point game. But after a free now by the Eagles, Beavers have the football again here. If they can get another score, we can have a little bit of an upset alert on our hands here as Gudino does end up picking up the first down. For the Beavers is now first and tens. Jones open over the middle, finds Godino. Two defenders run to each other. It's a foot race down the middle of the field. Touchdown, Beavers. And now a one possession game that could be even tighter as Godino also picks up the two point conversion. Now all of a sudden, the Eagles are now in need of getting some points on the board here as they need to get some points make this a two score game get some kind of insurance at least run down the clock a little bit here as hunter is going to get across the 40 yard line great run on first down leading to another first down as kelly gets lit up and oh no mark kelly is down and you see the injury reports mark kelly is going to be done for the season. Looks like a knee injury. So not only for the rest of this game, but also for the rest of the season, they will be going with the backup quarterback. And you want to talk about lack of reputation? I can't even tell you who the first name is for this backup quarterback. I literally do not know. The name completely escapes me. And that's why he threw an interception. But Twin Cities can't capitalize, so... Just got to go ahead and try to run some clock out a little bit. Smith does find Maven open over the middle of the field. And he gets open field space. Maven going to help the Eagles escape as Iroquois gets another touchdown on the board. And the number eight team in the nation is going to escape Upsetville, defeating the Twin City Beavers by a final score. Of 42 to 29. So a surprisingly exciting game that we have here. I figure we're gonna see some you know blowouts because I did change, you know, who gets seen on the channel more often. Want to get the more talented teams, you know, in front of you guys more often as we go into the second game of today's ACSA episode. And 
this time we have the Bluffton Tech Fighting Muskrats taking on the South Idaho State Ranchers on their opening day. Bluffton Tech made it to the Big North Conference Championship game, almost made it to the college football playoff, but losing to the Iroquois Eagles in that conference championship game, that ultimately cost them back in season one, but they did turn around and did win the Fenema Elite Bowl. But I'm sure they're going to be on a revenge tour here in Season 2 as they try to throw it deep over the middle of the field. But they're going to call it an incomplete pass, though. As now, 2nd and 10, Roberts dropping back, throwing over the middle. White getting open this time around for another first down. Darius Roberts with a phenomenal pass right in the bucket. And you can see why Darius Roberts was named the passing leader of the ACSA back in Season 1. But Roberts can do it with the legs as well. As he runs it in by himself for the touchdown. He gets it done on the ground as well. As you can see it here again. Nice little pump fake here as well on top of that. Good for a 5-yard gain on the play. As now 2nd and 5. Roberts dropping back. Throwing over in the middle, has several men, finds White downfield, he's got himself a new guy to go ahead and throw it to another touchdown for Bluffton Tech. And the, and the Fighting Muskrats are up to a quick 14-0 lead here. We'll see how South Idaho State can respond though. South Idaho State again, not one of those solid teams in the Midwest, although to be fair to Midwest Conference. Had a tough season last year, but hang on, folks. South Idaho State going to get on the board here. Deckard with a long touchdown reception here. Great throw by Garland, by the way, as that cuts the deficit in half. As we cut to the second quarter now, 17-7 in favor of Bluffton Tech. Harrell about to make it 24-7, though. As no one's going to be able to catch this man, as my man Legion once said. He was gone like a girl in a country song. Touchdown, Bluffton Tech. Josh Harrell making it a 24-7 lead. But South Idaho State, man, they can uh, move the ball down the field a little bit themselves. Can't completely count them out quite yet. As Garland going to go ahead, do a little scramble, doing a little laundry cycle right there. Spinning off the defender. You don't see that from your average quarterback, but he just pulled it off right there. And it almost led to a first down as well, so you love to see that. He's now second and nine. Garland dropping back the pass. He's looking over in the middle. Finds Decker once again. He's already got a touchdown reception. He's going to help move the chains once again for the Ranchers. We're now deep into Bluffton Tech territory. First and 10, going to throw the right-hand side to Fatino, but he can't hang on to it. Incomplete pass. So now we got second and 10 coming up here. Garland dropping back the pass. He's looking around, got a surprisingly clean pocket. Garland going to go ahead and scramble out himself and gets it into the red zone as well, getting into the 15-yard line. And now first and 10 following the long scramble by Garland. Going to throw it over the middle. Finds Decker. And Decker gets his second touchdown reception of this game. And it comes back down to a 10-point deficit. South Idaho State certainly putting up quite a fight like the, like the Twin City Beavers did against Iroquois in our previous game in this episode. As they are ready to return this kick away to Bluffton Tech. 16 down the sideline. No. But he's marked out of bounds at the 40. If it wasn't for that last defender, that man was going to be gone. And he would have had himself a kick return for a touchdown here on this opening day. But for now, Bluffton Tech gets some good field position to go ahead and work with here on this drive now. As we got first and 10 coming up after a scramble by Darius Roberts. Which does also carry them into Rancher territory. As Roberts will drop back the pass again. Dropping back. Nobody getting open. At least not in the eyes of Darius Roberts though. It's going to be a six yard gain. It's now second and four. Roberts throwing over. Thinking about throwing over in the middle. But actually is a quarterback designed run. That goes for another first down here as well. 
as Roberts will drop back again. He's scrambling, throwing to the left-hand side, finds Jarrell Harrell for another first down, sitting right outside of the red zone as well. There's a cut to a few plays later now. Roberts finding a man in the back of the end zone, and it's good. It's Griffin this time for the touchdown. Bluffton Tech with a 31-14 lead now as the Ranchers are simply trying to keep up right now. But Bluffton Tech, one of the most explosive offenses in all of college football. And we are certainly seeing it on full display right now. That's 31 points and we're not even done with the first half yet. That's the crazy part. As Garland's going to go ahead and move it forward for a first down on the play. It's now first and 10. Garland dropping back and a throw it over in the middle. It's intercepted by Dixon, though. And that's what happens when you have big deficits. Your offense gets thrown out of whack. You got to go a little bit off script. And that's when this defense for Bluffton Tech will make you absolutely pay for it. And now they have the football back here once again. Huge play coming up for the South Idaho State defense. Now with third and four as Roberts throws it short over to Polanski on the right-hand side, but does end up picking up the first down regardless. Don't need to do anything too crazy. Just got to move the chains. That's the name of the game. As Roberts will drop back again on first and ten. Roberts sending one deep has a man. Finds Levon in the end zone. Touchdown, Bluffton Tech. The Fighting Muskrats again with another score and it's now 38 to 17 and again we're still in well we're now in the second quarter i should say but they scored 38 points in this first half now here we are in the second half now late in the third quarter actually things are more back and forth south Idaho state seems to be settling down just a little bit but that being said bluffton tech trying to manufacture another drive Sitting on about midfield as Mason Paul takes it to the right-hand side. Picks up some great yardage as well. A 10-yard gain on the play. Is now third and two. Thrown over the middle. Finds Lampkin again. He's been getting plenty of action here today. Still good for a first down here as well. Is now Roberts again. Thrown over the middle. Finds Lee Bond. And it's a seven-yard gain on the play there you love to see it though a more methodical drive by bluffton tech as they try to throw it short again on the left hand side but that ball might have been tipped at the line of scrimmage because i'll tell you what that was um you know that was thrown a little short you know if i say so myself but bluffton tech still able to pick up the first down here anyways is now first and 10 Roberts dropping back facing pressure from the left hand side nearly intercepted but this defensive back did not have all state because my man did not have the good hands right there and it leads to second and 10 which means Salaba getting open once again on that short passing route making the defender look silly and almost getting into the end zone here in the process is now third and goal. Paul trying to run it in himself. That's no good though. As is now fourth and goal. So Paul gonna go ahead and run it in. No touchdown for Bluffton Tech. And the Fighting Muskrats once again get another score on the board. And it really seems like the Fighting Muskrats, they certainly came to play. They might be a little uh, pissed if I say so myself doing a little bit of that revenge tour here is now first and ten again Garland thrown to the right hand side it's intercepted by Hensman he only has one man to beat as well he's brought down however and a really bad day just getting worse for South Idaho State as as if it wasn't easy enough for Bluffton Tech they already have 45 points on the board they have great field position off the interception as well so you really Hate to see it right there. But you gotta give it to South Idaho State. They were actually in it longer than I anticipated. I thought we would be cutting out to a different game much sooner by now. But Roberts throwing to the right hand side. Finds Salaba almost getting into the end zone here at the same time. It's a fresh first down 
for the Bluffton Tech finding Muskrats. As Roberts will try to throw it right hand side again, but throw it a little too high. Incomplete pass. And so Bluffton Tech going to go ahead, drop back with Darius Roberts, throws it to Bolosky over in the middle. Touchdown, Bluffton Tech. And Bluffton Tech winning convincingly here, winning by a final score of 59 to 23. And now for the final game of today's ACSA episode, the opening day here of Season 2, we have the Alfred the Great Saxons going on the road to play against the Sugarland State Cowboys, who come in ranked number 9 in the nation and are the defending Big Southwest Conference champions, as well as a team that has made an appearance at the Soden Bowl back in Season 1. Alfred the Great, though, they are no slouch either, the National Athletic Conference runner-up. Did not go to a bowl game, but finishing second place in any conference, you know, that is quite the achievement. As we'll go ahead and get this thing underway. Somehow managed to get out of it, though. Has one man to beat. Somehow manages to get out of there. And he's going to be gone. Touchdown, Alfred the Great. And what an exclamation point to start this game. The Saxons. Now with a 7 and nothing lead. And so here we go here. We might have ourselves a game right here. Alpha the Great may not be ranked at the moment. But they do have a guy in Jeff Fisher. Who is the rushing leader from year 1. But fumbles the football there in his first carry of the game. You hate to see it. The rushing leader of the ACSA back in season 1. Fumbles the football on his first carry. But we also have a fumble on the other end as well. So Alfred the Great getting bailed out for the time being. But we still have a 7-0 lead here in favor of the Saxons. As we have only a minute left here in the first half. Both teams very, struggling very much to get anything going whatsoever. You get, it's been a really tough time for both teams offensively, but Sugarland State might have something going here as Jonathan Cooper will drop back the pass. Throw to right-hand side. Find Solins, who nearly gets into the end zone. Going to be marked down at the one-yard line. But the Cowboys got to move quickly. They get to the line, get to the snap, and Finley makes the catch in the back of the end zone. Touchdown, Sugarland State. And the Cowboys will go ahead and tie this thing up at seven apiece. And so here we go. Second half underway. We still got ourselves a ball game here. We might have our very first upset of, in uh, season two of the ACSA. Still have a lot of football left to play though. And Jonathan Cooper will throw short over the middle to Watson. But does the rest of the work need in order to pick up that first down here as well. Is now first and 10. Cooper throwing the right hand side. It's dropped and caught off the tip is Dan Campbell. Leading to an interception for Alfred the Great. But they go free and out. So game still remains tied at seven apiece for right now. We got second and 10 now coming up after an incompletion thrown by Jonathan Cooper. They go to Persig. Up the middle of the field. Going ahead and picking up some nice yards here as well. First down for the Cowboys. It's now first and 10. Cooper dropping back again. Clean pocket to work with though. Going to throw it to the left hand side. Thought he had himself a man but did not throw it hard enough apparently. So an incomplete pass here once again. It's now second and 10. Cooper dropping back. Going to send one deep. Has a man. Finds Allen in the middle of the field, who proceeds to carry the ball across the 20 yard line for a big first down. Sugarland State getting close to the end zone to try and take their very first lead of this ball game. Is now second and goal. Cooper dropping back. Finds Finley again for his second receiving touchdown of the day, and more importantly, the Sugarland State Cowboys do have their very first lead of this ball game. So now a 14-7 advantage in favor of the Cowboys. And they have the football here once again. So they have an opportunity here 
to continue to build on this lead is now second and five. Cooper dropping back, throwing the right hand side, gets it to Allen, but fumbles the football though. Alfred the Great is able to recover, but again, they can't capitalize off of the turnover. So it's still a 14 to seven lead for Sugarland State as we now go into the fourth quarter of play between these two squads. It's now second and two, Cooper. Dropping back, he's looking. Gonna throw it downfield as a man finds Noel. And he gets to, looks like, across the 20 yard line here once again. Another big play here for this Cowboys offense in the second half as Cooper throws right hand side to Finley, who's got a couple of receptions for touchdowns in the back of the end zone, but can also pick up that first down as well, his third catch of the day. As speed which trying to throw to left hand side, trying to get to Ryan Finley here once again. But incompletion now leading to third and goal. Cooper will drop back, throw over the middle to Watson, who fumbles the ball. Alfred the Great recovers it once again. And now Alfred the Great is the third time finally to charm here. We'll just have to wait and see. And if they're going to tie this game, it could be on the back of Jeff Fisher. The rushing leader from season one of the ACSA. But it's not going to be just Fisher. It's also going to be this quarterback who just picks up the first down on the ground. As Winslow trying to throw over in the middle. Finds Saltier, but he fumbles the ball, though, and gives it back to the Cowboys. And Sugarland State in field goal range here once again. A score could very well be the dagger here in this game. It's now 2nd and 10 coming up. Cooper dropping back, throwing the right hand side. It is incomplete though once again. So now here we go. 3rd and 10 from the 21 yard line. Cooper will drop back once more. Going to throw it to the corner. The end zone! Fine! Solon! What a back shoulder throw! And that's going to do it here. Sugarland State coming out on top against the Alfred the Great Saxons. Wing their home opener by a final score of 21 to 7. With a thrilling conclusion to the Sugarland State first Alfred the Great football game here in this opening week in season two of the ACSA Dynasty, we'll go ahead now and check out some of the scores that have happened throughout you know the course of the league starting with the southfield dalmatians they open things up with the modesto state buccaneers i always love the modesto state unis but the football team still has a lot to do as they end up following the southfield final score being 28 to 3 a good win for southfield keeping up the pride of the big north the eastern pennsylvania beavers open up the season playing against the vermont vipers from the midwest conference and eastern pennsylvania does go ahead and end up taking care of business winning by a final score of 24 to nothing but we also have a couple of upsets and they happen to two teams that are in the big southwest conference starting off we have the number 13 ranked team in the nation the hayes college indians they host the George Fox Bruins uh, in Eugene, Oregon. And let me tell you, George Fox Eugene gets a huge win on the road, winning 19-10 against the 13th ranked team in the nation. Not to be outdone, however, is the Sycamore Aviators from the National Athletic Conference. They went on the road as well and played against the David Crockett Mavericks, the number 22 ranked team in the entire country. And Sycamore comes out on top. They win 9 to nothing, getting another upset win as well. Though not a good start here overall for the ranked teams in the Big Southwest Conference. Just 1-2 and two to start Season 2 of the ACSA. So now we'll go ahead and go into a little bit of a preview for the next slate of games here. That will be dropping a couple of days from now here in this inaugural week of Season 2. Starting things off, we have the Traytown Lions from the Midwest Conference. They're going to go on the road to play against the number five team in the entire nation, the Southern New Mexico Cougars, coming in ranked number five in the ACSA. This will be the first game of that episode. After that, we do keep it in the Big Southwest Conference, where the Louisiana Central Black Bears 
We'll play against the number 10 team in the nation, the Texas Catholic Gladiators. They came off last season winning the Soden Bowl, as well as nearly making it to the Big Southwest Conference Championship in the previous season. Should be a good one as Louisiana Central, they try to bounce back after they had a rough inaugural season in the ACSA over in the Stars and Stripes Conference. And to top off the episode, dropping a couple of days from now, we get a look once again at the Lake Ozigo Ironmen, the number two ranked team in the entire nation. They come in, number two in the nation, nearly going to the championship game and losing to the eventual champion. They go on the road and play against the University of California, Calabasas, while they're unranked. This could be a sleeper team. This could be one of the better matchups here in this opening week here in Season 2. So, it's going to be a really exciting episode. And if you are ready for it, please do me a favor. Smash that like button. Hit subscribe. You have to be brand new. As well as let me know down in the comments who you think will win the national championship here in Season 2. As well as what games you're most excited about here in the ACSA. This is John Shea Game on the Mic. Hoping you guys are all out there having a wonderful day. Take care, everybody.